CSC Show Control Tutorial 2, Adding a Queue. So the way this program works is it works through queues. You add queues to your queue list, and then a queue can contain lots of different types of information. It can contain audio, it can contain MIDI information, it can contain serial information, it can contain control change information, so you can change the audio of a queue by fading it up, fading it down, etc. So basically we need to start with just creating queues. The easy way to do that is to hit the plus Q button up here and that will bring up the add edit queue. It automatically numbers in steps of a one and we're automatically highlighted here. So I'm going to just type scene one. I typically use a color coding system so that I know what my cues are doing. If it's just a lighting cue by itself, I'll put just blue. If it's a normal cue that may contain lighting and audio information, I'll put green. If it's a blackout, I may put uh, red. Uh, you can use your own color scheme for that. So this is going to be a normal cue for me. So I'm going to click on the little color block down here and select green for my color and then say OK. Uh, some other information here. Uh, you can put in a page number if you want that may correlate with a page in your script that makes it easier to identify. If you're doing a variety show and you have several different acts, you can choose and type in different act numbers. And that comes in handy if you have an act that's going to be switched around, like maybe on one evening that act's going to go first, in another performance on another evening that act is going to go third. Uh, CSC allows you to shift around the cues as groups of acts. And we can show you that at a later time, but if you want to do that, you can select uh, what act that it's going to be. Link time, this would be, if it's going to be linked to another queue, so this queue would fire and then proceed to another queue, you would put down the length of time in seconds that you want it to wait before it links and jumps to and plays the next queue. And then you select the queue that you want to link to in there. As far as triggers go, we're not going to bother with this. This would be externally controlling the program, and we're going to talk about that at another time. So basically, we're ready to go here. We've got a queue created. Now you'll notice when I brought this up, if you don't see the color, if you click in the description box up here, you'll notice that the queue list will change and it'll say expanded view. If it comes up and it's white like that and you don't see the color, it's because you're looking at this in expanded view. Simply click in this area here and the expanded view will disappear and now you'll actually see the color of the queue. And we're going to talk about that expanded view in the next tutorial here. So I'm going to add another cue. Again, you can click on the X here or you can just on your keyboard, hold control and click A for add. So that's a nice shortcut for that and, and save you clicking your mouse all over. Again, it's going to auto number. I'm going to say scene two. Select my green color again. Say OK. Again, I'm not linking anything, so there's my scene two queue in. I'm going to add another queue, uh, an auto number. Uh, let's call this scene three. Again, you would call them whatever you want to call them. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to title it as, scene three. I'm going to add one more. I'm going to make this blackout. And typically, I like to make my blackouts red so I can find them in my queue list very, very quickly when I'm uh, running the show. So there we have our three queues in, and we have our blackout queue in there. Now, as far as moving queues around, if you need to add something or insert a queue, we would use the insert queue command. So if I highlight two and I click my insert queue command, it's going to make this 2.1. You can renumber it to be anything from 2.1 to 2.9, and that'll keep that inserted between Q1 and Q3. So we'll leave it 2.1, and if I click OK, you'll see that it puts the new Q in between there. I'm just going to get rid of that for now. You can move a Q around if you want to also. So I have Q1 here and Q3 here. I can renumber this Q2 to be anything between 1 and 3. I simply double click it and I just simply change the number. Let's say we can change it to 2.5 and say OK. So now that's 2.5. So now if I was to click here and then click insert, 
it would insert a Q2 for me. So you're getting the idea. If you need to add Qs or move things around, you can do that. Uh, we can't go with alphanumeric things like Q2a, but we can do decimals like 2.1, 2.2, etc., etc. So it allows you a lot of flexibility as far as moving things around in your Q list. Um, I'm just going to say cancel. We're not going to put that in. Let's put this back to Q number two. I can't move this Q down here past three, so I can't take this Q and move it to Q 3.5. I'll show you. I'll say, okay, make this 3.5 and click OK. It simply will ignore my command and won't do anything with it. But there is a way to do that. So you hold down your shift key on your keyboard and grab this and drag it down and drop it. And notice now that Q3 moved up and Q2 is down here and it relabeled Q2 as 3.1. So that is the way that you could do that. Now, I can very easily go back, double click on my Q3, change this to number two, and change this to three. So I've kind of fixed my Q list the way that I needed to go. So that's how you would move Qs around within the Q list and adjust them. Well, let's just add another Q at the end here. And I'll say, okay, it's just going to be white. The only way to delete a queue is to select the delete queue icon, which is here. There's no shortcut for that. There is a shortcut for insert. The insert shortcut is control I. And you'll see that it says 3.1. So it'll do that. All right. So you get the general idea about adding queues into the queue structure. Now, as far as your notepad is concerned down the bottom, we can add notes to each queue that may be helpful, and they will appear down here in the notepad window. So for scene one, I can say script page four, so I know where that's supposed to occur at. I can put other things in here as far as wait for actor off stage before you click the next cue, etc., etc. So any information that you want to add to these, again, I could say script, page 24. So as I jump around then these notes will come up and associated with the cues which just makes it a little bit easier to follow. A lot of times I will put script notes in here so if I'm trying to find where I am or I'm on a particular scene and I want to know where that is in the script I can find that. Sometimes I just put something like just P24 or something really quick for myself so I know where I am. So notepad window comes in very very handy for that.